So I'd like to tell you guys a little bit about the background, kind of like what we do and the size of the apiary that I manage to give you an idea for the uh, extracting equipment that I have currently and uh, that we're running. We run around 300 colonies for honey production. Uh, we make up, I have an additional 350 nucleus colonies that we make up with our own queens. Uh, it's a whole other topic to discuss like the queen breeding program that I've had here for the last over, the, over a decade now. Um, so we will annually we'll harvest around anywhere from this year we have a crop of honey that's probably around a thousand supers 800 to a thousand supers well there's a thousand supers out we'll see we're, you know obviously when they're when they come in we'll figure how much are actually full of honey uh, but to give you an idea this machine's probably uh, suitable for an, an apiary with with colonies are at about 300 I'd say 350 uh, honey producing colonies maybe 400 you could run through this but I'd say once you start getting above 400 you'd, you'd probably be looking at a, a bigger machine to handle the volume of, of supers that need to get extracted in a day. All right, so quick overview of the Cowan 28 frame system and to give you guys a little bit of context and uh, around my purchase, like what to expect for productivity, um, the uh, what as a as a beekeeper looking into this system, you know what can what's a reasonable uh, you know amount of time that it takes to, to extract, and how much how much honey at the end of the day what can you end up with? Um, how can this effectively be a good investment for you as far as for time and uh, the number of colonies that you manage and the amount of honey you have to extract? I was before I bought this system, I was running two 30 frame uh, radial extractors into just a sump with a pump and into you know bulk tanks and in barrels. I, I, in a good day with two people, we could barely get through 80 supers. With this system, uh, I was able to double the, uh, the production. And that's just like from day one of just working with this, not having a system really figured out, but just two people uh, running the system, one person on the extractor, Tractor, one person running the uh, one person on the end cap or one on the extractor we could do we could do um, before right right about lunchtime or noon you know we we would already be extracting we would have almost 100 or over 100 supers by the end of the season which I'm at now and they're done extracting there's been multiple days where I could have you know I could have doubled the the capacity for the supers we could have run 200 supers in a day it feels like because we buy by 1 p.m. we already had 110 supers run through this and there is some kind of nuances to it. If you have supers that are coming in and you have to scrape top bars, bottom bars, the supers themselves, I was probably averaging uh, around 150 30 supers a day because you've been the added scraping on this end of the extractor you know someone who's uncapping is scraping and doing all that takes a little bit more time but if, if the frames are cleaned up and you can just load them into the uncapper you can do um, I, I, I think you know it, it would be very reasonable that you could do close to almost 160 180 supers in a day um, with two good people working and the nice thing about this is that you can work this with one person I've done that a few days on some weekends with uh, kind of trying to get ahead uh, you can effectively run a decent amount of honey through this just with one person which is really nice because often t help is, can be a hard thing to come by so um, it is nice that you can still run this effectively with two people my old system there was no way I could could even make a dent in anything productivity wise with just one person you needed to have one person running an uncapper and I was just using a, a chain uncapper <coughs> excuse me and with this uncapper, it's much like as I mentioned in the previous videos in this in this uh, video uh, that this this uncapper can stay stay way ahead of the extractor. So it's a very efficient machine. And overall, I'm very impressed and uh, satisfied with my investment in this machine and what it can do. Um, uh, I think that anyone who's at a size or reached a point in their apiary where they're a small commercial, you know, very small commercial, like I, I mentioned before, if you're running around 300, 400 colonies and your crop of honey is, you know, anywhere from, you know, 15 to 25, 30,000 pounds of honey, I think that this machine is a very nice match uh, for somebody to do, you know, to process, to get all the honey through in a reasonable amount of time with a reasonable amount of people. I think two people can do quite a bit with it. So. Uh, so just like a basic outline on like the footprint of my space and for people to kind of get an idea like well what how much space is needed for this system uh, my extracting uh, facility here this side of the building is 14 feet wide 44 feet long uh, and the extractor takes up uh, I'd say by looking around it takes the, the extracting space that I have probably takes up half of that space so um, you know just basically you know with the, with the, the, uh, the, the uh, uncapper to the extractor 
extractor, the sump, pump, and spinner. It kind of all takes up a little bit of space and there's different ways that you can s configure it you know to fit into your space but overall uh, it's a fairly compact machine that I feel can work in some some smaller commercial uh, footprints when it comes to extracting. So this is the beginning of the process that we have with the, uh, extracting the honey. Most people are very familiar uh, with uh, this machine with the Silver Queen and Capper uh, but I will chime in my two cents. It's very efficient. Uh, it, it can uncap quite a bit of frames in the day. Uh, actually, it can outpace the extractor. If you really had, you know, just if you're just slugging away and throwing frames in there, it could just keep right ahead of everything. Um, but initially, with anything like with an inline system like this, the uncapper sets the pace for the whole line of, uh, of processing honey. So the more frames you can get through with the uncapper, uh, initially that means the more frames through an extractor and then out the other end for the overall uh, number of frames and number of boxes through the day. So. Um, my friend Ray, helper Ray, has been uh, uncapping and, uh, or at least taking the boxes and, and uh, putting the frames up into the uncapper. Um, this, uh, the Silver Queen, is designed where I believe you can have four, you can rest four frames on the on the frame rest. Um, the nice thing that I like that uh, Cowan has uh, on this 28 frame system is the, the poor man's deboxer, which is just some angle iron set up there where you can throw a super on. Um, maybe Ray can demonstrate here in a minute. We'll get that, uh, what that looks like. But you can essentially just take the super right up and use a, use a rubber mallet often just to pound the, the super down off the frames and it exposes the top bars and you can scrape the top. We usually scrape the top bars and then load it through the uncapper. Showing uh, just a quick demonstration on the, the, the poor man's deboxer, which is pretty simple. It just pops the frames right up off the frame rest so you can have access to the frames easily. You handle them and put them up onto the uncapper. So again, here we'll just quickly scrape off the top bars to keep the top bars clean. Uh, and then it's a simple process of loading the uncapper and into the, into the system and the frames begin. Uncapper. They come into the uh, whatever you want to call 
this trough tray, the, the line before the, the uh, extractor. Um, I don't know if there's a technical term that's usually given to this, but it is what it is. It's pretty explanatory for itself by just, by just observing it. Um, the smaller, you know, being that this is the baby, you know, the, the smallest line that Cowan makes, there's just a, there's no chains involved in this on the bigger 60 frame, 120 frame. Uh, everything has got a chain rail system where the frames are uh, gradually moved up uh, along this uh, along the tray here or the trot with chains. But uh, the baby brother of the of, of being the smallest, you know, what this line is, uh, just has I forget the plastic, but it's. Uh, I, I, I can't remember the name of the plastic, but regardless, it slides up pretty easily. Uh, the trick is the, the the Silver Queen has enough uh, mo, uh, has enough muscle in a sense to push the frames throughout this to push them all through this whole uh, line to begin with. But it is nice if you have two people running the system. To uh, I'd say whenever the frames start piling up halfway uh, onto the onto this tray here, to to use the trolley the frame trolley here and just you know scoop the frames up and push them up ahead uh, to the uh, to the extractor just to keep to keep some room in front of the end capper. If they do get backed up, then the, the, the end capper will start to actually, if they get jammed, some of the frames will cycle, try to get cycled back up through. And you can break frames and, and uh, have an issue there. But it's, it's, uh, it is fun because you kind of have to keep up with everything. So there's a momentum of keeping up with the end capper, uh, loading, you know, keeping the frames uh, ready to go before the extractor. And, um, and that's about it. So now we're ready to load the extractor. Um, I typically, I mean, again, I just just getting familiar with this whole system. I usually start to load the extractor when there's about five or six spaces, frames, empty frame spaces left, uh, just to stay ahead of the uncapper as much as I can, and then at the same time to have enough frames to smoothly uh, load the extractor. So to load is pretty simple. Again, most of you guys are familiar with Cowan if you've been seeing all these videos on YouTube of you know the bigger systems. But again, this is just showing you guys what the 28 same what the 28 frame system can do. So to open up the gate onto the basket or onto the, the for the extractor, it's pretty straightforward there. Uh, th this is the, the frame trolley. I will say it does require a little finesse when you first get used to it. Um, typically, you, you have to use kind of your fingers and uh, to push them through. Let me just get this going here. But it is, once you get the knack for using it, it is pretty straightforward. Um, and we'll address the uh, other, like there's some frames there that need to be scratched. So being that I run nine frames in a Honey Super, and this is the first year of using the Silver Queen, there are a few frames that slip through that need to be uh, scratched. What we'll typically do is let them come out the extractor and anything that needs to be run back through that we have to scratch, we run them back through. I know it's probably not the most economical or efficient way to do it, but that's the way we do it right now. I was thinking actually of converting to eight frames in the Honey Supers so that the Silver Queen would have less, uh, less issues with uh, with, with uh, or just more of an efficient uh, uncapping. So again, getting all the frames pushed up onto the extractor. I kind of like to get everything lined up for the next load just to keep the drips off the top bars so you can move the reel. And this is all, the nice thing about this, the new line here is that everything's direct drive. So you just operate the brake on the control panel to rotate the basket, or the, that's what I've been calling it, the basket and the extractor, and then push the frames on through. And make sure you got this opened up. Sometimes you push the frames too, too far, so you just gotta center them a little bit. Lock everything into position. And again, being that I'm a short guy, you gotta kinda reach up a little higher <laughs> on this to well close the encapper or the extractor and then just start it. So we typically will run uh, with Ray or whoever's, again, like I mentioned before, the uncapper is really what sets the pace for this whole system. So if you've got somebody who's really quick or maybe if you have a system where 
you don't have to scrape the top bars as much. You got all that automated before this. You can, that, the Silver Queen can really stay right ahead of the extractor. Uh, the honey is room temperature. I don't have a hot room. So the honey is about, right now I think it's about 75, 80 degrees in here. So the honey is probably anywhere from 65 to 75 degrees. So it is pretty cold for extracting from uh, most commercial uh, standards in a sense, being room temperature. I like to run the extractor for at least eight minutes. I figure at eight minutes, you're not gonna get any more honey out of the combs. If you run them for an extra, you know, if you run it for 10 to 15, or if you were to run it for a 15 minute cycle, I don't notice that much of a difference with honey out of the frames at the end of the day. Drippity drip. Spinner. Uh, it's uh, obviously it's, it's there's there's the there's the, the, the bigger variety of the edition or edition that you can see uh, that some people are you know that's out there for the larger systems. But the nice thing about this is it's sized very well with the uh, with the auger. So every time the auger or the 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 uh, reservoir above the auger is filled with cappings and wax, uh, or I should say just honey and all the cappings from the silver from the end capper, uh, you turn the auger on, pumps it up into the spinner, and it's pretty nice. If you really have uh, supers that are full of honey, uh, lots of capping, so pretty much this is running all the time. Every time the auger is full or right before you um, turn the auger on, empty the, spin empty the cappings out of the spinner, um, and then turn the auger on. So it's this continuous cycle of, you know, batch to batch. You know, one batch of the auger is one batch of the spin to the spinner, and about the same time it takes to fill the auger is enough time for the cappings to dry and to scrape them out and to uh, dump them in. We've got this, uh, again, this is all figure, I'm just trying to, this is a new system, so we're just trying to get everything figured out. But we will take the, the cappings, catch them in a bucket, and then dump them into a five gallon, or a 55 gallon drum. Uh, the one thing that I am going to do differently, I, I wasn't very, before I bought this, I was kind of skeptical of the power that the auger had to move the slurry up into the spinner. So I, I decided to kind of go for a smooth transition. I don't know if you can get that, Fred, like the, a smooth transition with this pipe. But this is obviously in the way. It's not very efficient with putting the drum underneath the uh, spinner. So I'm just going to, next year, I'm just going to hard, just take some PVC pipe or just hard, plumb it in hard so that it's, it's pretty tight to the spinner and you can get a drum up in there. So that's the only thing that's that you know come out of the extractor, uh, you have empty comb. Pretty straightforward, self-explanatory. Uh Again, being that uh, I have uh, nine frames in my Honey Supers and I'm kind of new with the Silver Queen, the Queen and the Silver Queen and Capper, I do get a few frames that come through that are uh, not fully, you know, there's some, there's frames that haven't been, that need to be further uncapped or scratched. So uh, what I'll do, like for the sake of just showing you guys what I've been doing and what I anticipate to do to alleviate the, this from be, taking too much time in the future. But I just go through real quick. I can, you can really, if you do this enough, you can do it by weight, you know, with your hands. You can weigh it out you know three at a time or four at a time uh, the nice thing about this I'll demonstrate it is you can unload you know a whole bunch of frames right into the super without having to piecemeal them like the way I'm doing it right now so this, these combs are pretty good I'll see if I can demonstrate what this would do if you if you didn't have to fuss around and you just could load the whole super, you can take the whole super, um, drop it right in.
But again, being that I've got a few frames coming through that are in need of attention, we'll just kind of piecemeal through these real quick and uh, figure out which ones have the extra honey in them. Like you got some frames like that, a little bit of honey. I'm not too picky about you know that type of, but sometimes I get like a whole frame with a face that's uh, still got honey left in it. Like that one, I'll run back through. Got to get every last drop, guys. We work hard for it. So, but if you got a big crop and you're looking at time and you got to get this done, then you just push it through. <laughs> so. I do have several hundred gallon uh, Kelly tanks that we will fill just for filling pails and a bottling tank for doing you know retail stuff in bottles. Um, it's funny I like to call this, this is the fancy heat exchanger <laughs> for all those you know bigger you know commercial operations that have a heat exchanger and a spin float system. Uh, I, it's nice because actually the, I, I have a, the, the sump is non-heated and being that uh, every, um, my customer base is raw honey so everything is just really pumped from the sump which is you know settled filter out I'd say you know 75 maybe 80 percent of the of the wax and then it's pumped up into the drum so at the end of the day the drum is going to have maybe an inch maybe half an inch quarter inch of wax so it depends really on the volume of honey that we pump through this whole system and at the heat of the you know temperature of the honey is crucial too the less the lighter or the less viscosity the, the wax particulate floats up in the honey faster colder the honey things don't move as fast so uh, essentially that's that's the end of the line here and uh, uh, it's pretty much a, to show you from, and I, for those who have no idea about any of this stuff, it's from comb to, to drum or from comb into honey from the comb into the drum or comb into the, into the tank into the bottle.